a lot of people do know this, uh, Spencer Haywood in 68 won a very, very predominant case against the government. That no, wasn't in 68. It wasn't in 68? It was 1970. That's 1970. 70, 70. I filed suit in 1970 against the NBA because I wanted to play. Well, let me just back up for a second, if I may. I was playing with Denver, and what happened with the Denver team was it was an ABA team. Mm. And so the Denver team in the ABA, Hannah Storm's father, Mike Storm, says, well, you know, we didn't get Kareem in the draft to come over to the ABA. Kareem went to NBA. Milwaukee. Rocky. So they came after me and said, well, look, your, your family is poor and in Mississippi. You know, let, you can be the first one to leave college early and play in the pros. I was like, you going to pay? So I left after my sophomore year. Mm. And even though I was an All-American first team with Kareem, Pete, Pete Maravich, Calvin Murphy, all of us was on the first team All-American mm. team in college. So I left and went to the ABA, and the ABA says, well, this gambit would work if you can get seven points and five rebounds a game for this season and this would be a good move for us. And we can then usurp the draft and get all the young guys to come into the ABA mm. before they go into the So NBA. they were trying to use it as a leveraging tool. A leveraging great, tool. Right? So I went in there and I have 30 points mm. and 19.5 rebounds. Hell with your seven points, right. You can yeah. have your seven You can have that seven. Talking about. I'm right. talking real ball Fuck, here. Right. I'm a cotton picker, man. Right. This ain't talking no about. work. This is work. <laughs> This is work, man. I want to work. <laughs> so, so I I bust out that season, and then I was the MVP, rookie of the year, leading scorer, leading rebound, the MVP of the All Star game. Nineteen years old, just turned twenty, and so I went into the ownership, and we said, well, look, they said, we're gonna give you a contract. So they gave me a fraudulent contract, a Bernie Madoff contract, where I was going to get my bulk of my money oh, from fuck. age, no, from age 50 to age 70. What? Providing if I would stay with the company and drive trucks. I know, it's okay. insane. So I, then I get- sounds like a Jim Crow deal. There. This was a Jim Crow deal for sure. Super Jim Crow and deal. And it's gonna get deeper. Oh, so, wow. I said, oh my God, I didn't have an attorney. I was like this Even young guy world. taking everything in and believing that they were oh, wow. going to take care of me. So I go get word. this lawyer. So Al Ross come in, he's my young Jewish lawyer. He come in, I'll straighten this shit out. You know, I got this. So we go into the office with the owners of the team who are these truckers, the Denver Rockets who are rocket service which is the Denver Nuggets today. So we go in and we sit down and we're like, yeah, we like to straighten this contract up and we like to do this. So the, the owner sat there and he looked at us and he said, I tell you what I want you two sons of bitches to do. Spencer, you take your nigger ass out of here and take that Jew ass lawyer with you. Get out of my office. You can't go back to college because you're ineligible. You can't go to the NBA because you can't, you're an underclassman, so you're stuck with me. This is to Mr. Storm. That's what he said to you. No, that Mr. Storm, Hannah Storm's dad, he was, he was the agent who put us all together. Oh. This was J.W. Ringsby who owned oh. the Denver Rockets. Mm. And he owned a franchise wow. here. So then Sam Schumann, who owned the Seattle Supersonics, and Jerry Colangelo, who owned the, the Phoenix, Phoenix Suns, Suns yeah. they had the idea, we're going to, because the ABA was raiding the NBA with players, so he said, let's raid the ABA guys. Every time they get an MVP, we're going to steal him and bring him to the NBA. Mm. But the one problem with me, they got Connie Hawkins to to go to Phoenix, mm -hmm. and then I was the next MVP, so I was on the class still. I had one more year left. Oh, Sam man. Schulman said, you know, what are we going to do? And I said, I want to play. And Sam Schulman said, well, 
I'm going to teach you about Jewish loyalty. I'm going to put up the finance for your case all the way through. And I don't care how far it go, we're going to fight this. So I was like, great. Oh, wow. So I filed suit and I signed with Seattle. They gave me a real contract. I, I filed suit for the rights to play in the NBA mm. and against the NC2A because the NC2A was under the banner. Like, right. you know, he's stealing all of our, they're going to steal all of our economics and everything from players because they're going to go from college or high school to the pros and we're not going to make any money anymore. So that was a big deal. Wow. And so the NBA was like, we'll put up a good front and we, because we don't want to like the public to be angry with the NBA. So they filed, I, when I filed suit, they filed suit against me and they jammed me for the first 10 games. I had to sit home and just practice and do this. And so, we had to sit yeah, so the next 10 games, I got in, they were like, the first game I got in, it was like, ladies and gentlemen, we have an illegal player on the floor, number Damn. 24. This how, they, this how they did you? Yeah, and I was like, what? I'm not illegal. <laughs> I'm here. <The> fuck? <laughs> and so. <laughs> on the mic. On the mic. And so, and this game is being played under protest. So I played the game, wow. and the game was under protest. So all of my first 10 games were under protest. Maybe it'd count, it would count and maybe not. And then they got an injunction again for another 10 games I had to sit out. Then the next 10 games, I got an injunction to play again. We get to Cincinnati and they said, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, we got an injunction tonight. And they said, this injunction read, he must be outside of the, the grounds in which this arena sat on. So they put me out into the snow. Oh, wow. So I stayed out in the snow and like, almost froze. And uh, then I got on the bus and left and, and had another 10 games. Then I got another 10 games. Next time we were in Chicago, Chet Walker is warming up on the other end. And the owners of the Chicago Bulls said, act as if you got hurt. So Chet said, oh, my God, my, my ankle is hurt. And so the next morning I get up and they sued me for $600,000. Why? Because he said he tripped on his ankle while I was warming up on the other end. So they're playing all these games with you. All kinds of games. So wow. I, the, the case maneuvered its way all the way to the Supreme Court. And when it got to the Supreme Court, Thurgood Marshall was on the court. He was one of the justices on the court. And he kept saying, you know, it's ironic this case is not affecting tennis players, hockey players, baseball players, and he kept going on with different sports. And he said, man, now, ironically, it's only the two revenue sports in college that this rule is affecting. And so he said, you know, we're sending our soldiers to Vietnam mm. at age 18. They're coming back maimed and and hurt and sick and dying. But yet, you got a player whose mother is picking cotton in Silver City, Mississippi for $2 a day. My mother was at that time. Mm. But yet, he makes all, he make all of this money for the Olympics. He made all of this money for the university. He made all of this money for the ABA. And yet, he can't make a living in the NBA. And so that's when the justice got together and they said they came back seven to two in favor of me. Oh, wow. And that's when the case was over, wow. March 1st, 1971. Wow. And then the next round was, uh, let's go play. Because the union didn't support me, so wow. everybody was, I was out alone by myself doing this whole wow. process. And so then we started playing and we got to Milwaukee and Kareem where normally every team would go downstairs and stay downstairs and make me sweat upstairs by myself and people throw bottles and stuff. These are real bottles back in those days, you know, not that plastic stuff. Mm. <laughs> so I would like to stand there, yeah, I'm the man, you know, and 
cream wouldn't go down. So we stood up, we stood in the middle of the floor just kicking it, you know? Wow. And so everybody came up from the Bucks and then we started playing. Wow. And that's when everything said, everybody said, damn, this guy is ready to play. And let's get ready for the young guys coming in because they are going to come. And then the NBA says, you know what? This is a great thing for us because now we have, we have a chance to expand and grow. Because before they had four years of waiting outside, you know, after high school, you had to wait four years before you could come into the NBA. That was to help college grow. It was growing the college game. College players never ever thought about having their own rights. Never no ever rights. thought about having anything. Didn't even know how to start negotiating or even start that conversation. We weren't equipped for that. Right. But yet, they owned your rights for four years and they four made years. money on you for four years. And how dare you ask for anything? And You're don't getting you an education. Ask, you don't even ask for a hamburger. Facts. Meanwhile, <laughs> numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. 